biggest influence on my life. Um, I think firstly my father actually. I never would have been an athlete if it wasn't for my dad. Okay. And I was I was a good sportsman, but I wasn't outstanding. And you always thought that once I'd won the English school's triple jump back in 1984 when I was 18 years old, that maybe I could make something of myself as an athlete. And he put me in touch with my first coach when I went to university in Durham. Um, and so if he hadn't done that, I certainly wouldn't have sought out the coach of my own accord. Okay. Uh, and if I hadn't, then I wouldn't have ended up becoming an athlete when I left university. So I'd certainly say my dad. And then probably through the course of of my career, it would be my sort of physio stroke coach, stroke mentor, a man called Norman Anderson, who registered blind, suffered some depression. <laughs> um, an interesting job, but he just, he used to be physio for Brendan Foster, for Steve Pratt, and okay. Mickey McLeod. Yeah. And he just, he had this wisdom for life generally, but about sport and getting in the right frame of mind. And I, he ended up becoming my coach, which he hadn't done for Cranley or for, for Brendan, but we just, we sort of just hit it off. Uh, he looked after my weight training in particular, and I would pick him up every day. And I think just in a very informal setting, he was like my sort of sports psychologist, as well as my, my, my strength training yeah. coach. Um, so probably, probably normal. My dad and normal. He's like a second dad to me. Though. Yeah. I always used to wonder whether sport had anything to teach business, if, if I'm honest. And I, used to, you know, I still do get asked to give motivational speeches. Like, always start by saying I'm not quite sure what the crossover is here but the experience with London 2012 uh, working very closely with, with Sedco uh, and seeing the kind of the attention to detail the focus this sort of ruthless pursuit of excellence that he brought to a, essentially a business organisation showed me that the general skills that I had as an athlete were very applicable to business there are specific skills whether it be accounting or I don't know, sales and marketing, whatever, which you don't get within athletics or within sport generally as a competitor. But, but the more general sort of att attitudinal things were really, really important. And often I think where sport really has something to teach business is that it's very rare that a CEO of a company, for example, will be given the latitude that a top athlete has to simply focus on being the best that they can be. You know, they might be travelling around the world, you know, on red eye flights, doing multi million pound business deals and being absolutely knackered. You would never think of turning up at your biggest competitions without being fully prepared, well rested, you know, arriving some a couple of days beforehand. And yet business leaders, top business leaders and you know, world leaders regularly do that sort of thing all the time. So in terms of looking after yourself, I think, um, and making sure you're in prime conditions where it matters the most, perhaps something that sport can teach business. Another 2012 was a remarkable team effort. You know, at games time there was probably seven or so thousand direct employees of the organising committee, 70,000 volunteers, and probably another 130, 40, 50,000 contractors, paid contractors. So it was a massive team effort. The logistics on that were kind of mind blowing. And I think, I think one of the things which did make a real difference in bringing all these sort of disparate organisations together, and certainly even in the early stages when you looked at all the different stakeholders, be it the sport, be it in the sporting world or the political world or you know, sports administration, they were all very different bits coming together with different agendas. There was nonetheless this central belief and vision that the games could make a difference, like the bigger the generation of East London or getting more young people involved in sport or improving our elite sport provision in this country. There was a real sense of vision. And I think that people coalesced around that vision and differences uh, were often forgotten. We saw that at a local level, local politics, you know, to travel around a lot in the lead up to the games um, to see how what sort of impact 2012 was having, you know, as far afield as Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, the North East where I live. And it did have this, this this way of bringing people together, they sort of believe in the Olympic ethos, uh, the Olympic values, and the idea that you could use this event for good. Uh, so I think vision and that sort of shared sense of purpose was really important for teamwork. I think being involved in 2012 has given me more satisfaction, okay. without question, because I think it's influenced more people than I ever could even dream of influencing as an athlete. You know, you know my close friends and family 
you know, obviously shared my successes. I'm sure there's been a few people who've been inspired to take up chicken shell, but the sort of the mass impact of putting on a game, and even though I've only played a very, very small part in that, to, to have done that and been involved right from the beginning of the bid process, right through to the closing ceremony of the, Par the uh, Paralympic Games, and indeed I'll be at the last board meeting when the company's wound up in May, has been something which I, I don't think I will ever have repeated in my life, and that sense of it, just making a real difference, and of making the country proud. I think to be Brit to be British, and it's I think that we're great at that in this country. Mm -hmm. Quite good at putting ourselves down and almost almost preparing ourselves for failure. And yet, we as a country spectacularly succeeded in putting on the games. What advice would I give myself? I was seventeen. Um, I think not to set any limits about what you can achieve. That's not to say you can achieve anything, and that's kind of quite a popular message sometimes with sports psychology. You put in your mind to it, you can achieve anything. Well, that's not that's not the case. There are physical limits, you know, your genetics, your natural talent. But the thing is, you don't know what they are. You know, pop out of your mother's room with a tag on which says you can triple jump so far, or you can run 100 metres this fast, or you know, you can be brilliant, uh, this good at maths, or whatever it might be. It's a, it's it's a journey. It's, it's an exploration. Of discovery, um, and I think too easily. I see this with my younger son actually. But it's almost like he doesn't want to try. Maybe he's afraid of failing, possibly. Um, but I would say that I had no idea at 17 that I could achieve, not a clue. But I tried to be as good as I could be, and and just sort of follow that that journey. And it's not. You know, straightforward path, and lots of ups and downs along the way, more downs than ups, to be honest, in the early stages. But you've got to see, see your way through through those. I think that's that's important. And secondly, I think believing in something. I think having a reason why you do something is important. I don't matter if it's sport or business or what you do within your kind of leisure time. I think having a, a belief which gives you a reason to get up in the morning to try and make a difference in some small way, one way or another, to you know, to a cause other than yourself or to, to somebody other than yourself, I think is important. <laughs> I've just finished reading Seth Coe's book, so I'm interviewing you for the Marxist <laughs> Society. <laughs> was it all highs? Yeah, well, that, it was better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> because autobiographies generally yeah. aren't brilliant. I read Bradley Wiggins's, which is alright, I mean, if you like cycling, it's yeah. interesting, but um, the best book I read recently, and I'm not, I'm not a great reader if I'm honest, uh, was The Secret Race by Tyler Hamilton, which was the expose of Lance Armstrong and cycling of Tour de France, and very well written, yeah. great pace to it, yeah. uh, and shocking obviously, yeah. in the revelations that, that he brought brought forward there, but it was um, one of those books you, you know, genuinely couldn't put, put it down.